welcome back. Today we will start lecture 10-1 on discrete time systems design transfer function control. The objectives of today's lecture are that students should be able to determine the steady state error for discrete time system given the transfer function. Students should also be able to find the transfer function for a discrete time system and to use a constant pre-filter proportional lead and lag control to design a discrete time control system. Finally, students should be able to create the root locus for a discrete time transfer function and use it to design a control system. The steady state accuracy for a discrete time system can be found from the final value theorem, similar to the process for analog or continuous time systems. Recall that the steady state error for a unity feedback control system is R of Z minus Y of Z is equal to R of Z over one plus G of Z. So using the final value theorem in order to find the steady state error, we would get ESS of KT equals the limit as K goes to infinity of E of KT, or the limit as Z goes to one of one minus Z inverse E of Z, or the limit as Z goes to one of Z minus one over Z times R of Z over one plus G of Z. Table one provides a summary of the steady state error for the step, ramp, and parabolic inputs. For the step a u of t, the steady state error is a over one plus kp, where kp is the position error constant, the limit as z goes to one of g of z. For the ramp a t u of t, the steady state error is the limit as z approaches one of a t over z minus one over one plus g of z, which equals a over kv, where kv is the velocity error constant, or the limit as z goes to one of one over t, z minus one g of z. And finally, the parabolic input a t squared over two u of t is the limit as z goes to one of a t squared times z plus one over two times z minus one squared times one plus g of z, which equals a over k a, where k a is the acceleration constant, and it's the limit as z approaches one of one over t squared times z minus one squared g of z. Just like with analog systems, we also have system types, but the system types are based upon the number of poles at one as opposed to the number of poles at zero. So a type zero system, which has no poles at one, has a steady state error of one A over one plus KP, where that system cannot track a ramp or an acceleration input, so those are both infinite. A type one system has a step input error of zero and a steady state error of A over KV and infinite for acceleration input. And a type two system can track a step and a ramp, so the steady state error is zero, However, the steady state error for an acceleration input is A over KA, and type three or more can actually track a step, a ramp, and acceleration with a steady state error of zero. It is possible to use transfer functions, root locus, or state variables to design a discrete time control system similar to what we did for a continuous time control system. Figure one shows the general discrete time closed loop control system with an input R of Z, an output Y of Z, the controller GC of Z, the plant GP of Z, and the feedback transfer function H of Z. The closed loop transfer function is the same as what we had before. It's given by GPF times GC times GP over one plus H of Z, GC of G, GP of Z. Remember, GPF is the pre-filter, and we use that in order to adjust for steady state error. One way to design a control system if the closed loop pole is on the root locus is to simply adjust the gain K. If the closed loop pole is not on the root locus, then a cascaded compensator must be designed to reshape the original root locus. The following steps will describe how to plot the root locus for a discrete time system on the Z plane. What you should notice here is that it is very similar to the steps that we use to plot the root locus for a continuous time system. The root locus, once again, starts at the open loop poles and moves to the open loop zeros. The root locus lies on the real axis to the left of an odd number of open loop transfer function poles and zeros. The root locus is symmetrical about the horizontal real axis and the root locus breaks away from the axis or enters the axis based upon the following polynomial. N of Z D prime of Z minus N prime of Z D of Z equal to zero. And the plot of the root locus must satisfy one plus K G of Z D of Z equals zero, which is the magnitude criterion and the angle criterion that we had before. Table three provides a summary of the continuous time and discrete time PID controllers 
that can be used to improve the steady state and transient response of a control system. The proportional and derivative gain affect the transient response such as percent overshoot, rise time, and settling time. The pre-filter and integral control affects the steady state response such as steady state accuracy and stability. Table 4 provides a summary of the system characteristic equations. So here's table 3 where we have a comparison of continuous time and discrete time PID controllers and recall that we can combine these to be a PI, PD, or PID controllers where GC of S is KP but GC of Z is also KP. GC of S is KI over S for integral but it is KI over 1 minus Z inverse for discrete time and the derivative is KDS for continuous time and KD times 1 minus Z inverse for discrete time. Some of the system characteristic equations we will need for our design are rise time, which is 1.8 over the natural frequency, 1% settling time, which is 4.6 over zeta omega sub n, and notice we also have a 2% settling time that is negative 4 times the sampling time over the natural log of the magnitude of the pole. We've used that one before. Let's write that down as a recall. The 2% settling time is negative 4t over the natural log of the magnitude of the pole. And remember the pole closest to the unit circle will dominate and that will be the overall settling time for the system. The peak overshoot is e to the negative pi zeta over the square root of one minus zeta squared, which is similar to the one we had for the continuous time. And for percent overshoot, we use zeta is greater than or equal to 0 0.6 times one minus the percent overshoot divided by 100. In class activity one, for the following plant transfer function, find the steady state error for a step, ramp, and parabolic input. Solve twice, once for the sampling time t equal to 0 0.1 seconds and once for t equal to 0 0.5 seconds. So since we have a continuous time transfer function, g of s is equal to 20 times s plus 3 over s plus 4 times s plus 5, the first thing we have to do is use a zero order hold in order to convert this to discrete time. So what we'll have is g of s is equal to g z h of o h of s g of s which equals 1 minus e to the negative s t over s times 20 times s plus 3 over s plus 4 times s plus 5. So we can simplify this and it becomes 1 minus e to the negative st times 3 over 5 plus 5 over s plus 4 minus 8 over s plus 5. So then g of z is equal to the z transform of g z order hold of s g of s which equals one minus z inverse times 3z over z minus 1 plus 5z over z minus e to the negative 4t minus 8z over z minus e to the negative 5t. Finally, we can use algebra to simplify this expression and it becomes the quantity 5e to the negative 4t minus 8e to the negative 5t plus 3 times z plus 5e to the minus 5t minus 8e to the negative 4t plus 3e to the negative 9t all of that over the product of z minus e to the negative 4t times z minus e to the negative 5t.
If t is equal to 0 0.1 seconds, then g of z simplifies to 1.5z minus 1.11 over z minus 0 0.67 times z minus 0 0.606. And the steady state error due to a step input is one over one plus g of one or infinity. or one fourth. And this makes sense because this is a type zero system, which means there are no poles at one. So we know that if it tracks a step with error, it's going to have error trying to track a ramp in a parabola, but we'll go ahead and write the equation. ESS over one over, one over 0 0.1 squared times the limit as z approaches one of z minus one g of z. You can do the math, but that's going to give you infinity. And for a parabolic input, the steady state error is one over one over 0 0.1 squared times the limit as z approaches one of z minus one squared g of z, and once again, that one is also infinity. Now what about for t equal to 0 0.5 seconds? For t equal to 0 0.5 seconds, g of z is equal to 3z plus 1.844 over z minus 1.22 times z minus 1.284. And we can stop here because what you should see here is that for this sample time, we have both of the poles, which are greater than one, and this yields an unstable system. So we know that it won't be able to track any kind of input, and the steady state error is infinity.